Joining us now is Dame Melanie Dawes, who's the CEO of Ofcom. It's good to see you. Thank you for joining us. A couple of things to talk to you about, not least what's happening with the Royal Mail. Uh, what are you proposing? Well, what we're saying today, and we've published a big report with lots of research, as you would expect from us, is that our postal services, letters and parcels, are incredibly important still to us as a country, but we are using them very differently to how we were maybe a decade or so ago. So we were sending 14 billion letters a year in 2012. That's now only 7 billion. So we need to reflect now on what we need from that service because it just gets more expensive if Royal Mail are passing our homes every single day but with fewer and fewer letters. There's a risk that we either have to pay a lot more or that um, the service actually becomes unsustainable. So we're opening up a national conversation on this today. Uh, do you uh, favour any of the particular suggestions that you're making? No more Saturday postal deliveries, potentially um, delivering every other day? What we're saying today is that there are a number of things you can do to adjust this. We're not favouring any particular proposal, but one option is to cut the number of days that the Royal Mail is required to bring letters to your home from six to five or even every other day, so three days a week. But the other option is actually to shift second class to a slightly longer delivery time, maybe from three days to four or five. These are all things that other countries have started to do. Um, and what we found in our research is that what the public really wants is affordability and reliability. They they actually are prepared to trade a slightly longer, slightly slower service, provided that the overnight option is still there for first class when they need it, and provided that when they buy a stamp and post a letter, it arrives on time. Uh, we spoke to the unions this, uh, who represent the postal workers earlier on in the week, and they say that you haven't spoken to them uh, at all, the CW union, saying this report has been produced without consulting a single uh, uh, Royal Mail worker. Is that true? Well, look, this is the start of the conversation, so we're not reaching any conclusions at this stage. And, in fact, we're opening up very much for input from everybody who's interested. I think postal workers will have a lot to say. They are the experts. They know what's going on now in the Royal Mail sorting offices and what needs to change. So uh, I think you know, this is the beginning of the debate. Our report's only been out for an hour or so, so I would hope that we will get lots of contributions. Do you accept that uh, Royal Mail workers do more than just put letters through the letterbox? Absolutely. As I was saying earlier, our posties are part of our communities and that, this is something that we hear all the time. I think we all can recognise that. So it's that broader role they play. Uh, but we need to, I think, think as a country then what we need from this service because... You know, we can't have everything. We're increasingly sending things by email or by text or by WhatsApp messages. Uh, so we need that service to be there when we need it. But if we want it to be sustainable and affordable, I think we're going to have to accept some change. We don't think that doing nothing is an option here. And that's because of cost? It's because of cost, and, 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 but ultimately because we're, we're using the service very differently. We're not sending as many letters and we're sending a lot more parcels. So another, uh, an, another thing that's happening is that the size of parcels is going up. Um, in fact, the number of parcels that are bigger than a shoebox has gone up, has doubled in the last six years. We're all, you know, ordering air fryers and cat litter and bigger trainers maybe. Um, and that actually puts different pressures on the system too. So... Uh, we think we need to just think about all these issues in the round, businesses, consumers, and, and try and come up with some new solutions. Uh, the union, as I said, spoke to the leader, um, says Ofcom is no longer credible. How do you respond to that? Well, look, I would say to everybody out there, engage with the report that we've just published. It's the beginning of a conversation, very much not the end of it. Uh, we do want to get the expertise of postal workers in there. Um, the company needs to input. But, but really, above all, we want to hear from consumers and businesses about what they need and what they think. And when you do get... How long is the consultation and when will you make a decision? Well, it will last through to the beginning of April and then we will come forward by the end of the year with some options. Some things, like changing the number of delivery days, will be for ministers and parliament and then there are other things we can do through our regulations or that the company can do. So we'll come forward on that later in the year, very much based on what people have said to us. Mm. And while you're doing that, you're also running in tandem. Um, um, greater responsibility as far as the BBC is concerned? Yes, yeah, so the government announced earlier this week that they're extending our regulation of the BBC uh, not just to their broadcast TV and radio channels but also to what they do online through their news app and also their own BBC social media accounts and I think that's very sensible because the public are consuming all news, uh, not just from traditional TV and radio but increasingly um, in lots of other ways. So that will allow us to take a more holistic view. And what would that mean as far as, say, Gary Lineker is concerned? We wouldn't be regulating individual social media accounts of individuals. Uh, it's very much the BBC's own channels.
OK. Do you think, a question that I've put to so many uh, ministers uh, this week, non available today, um, that the BBC is biased? Well, look, this is such a hotly debated question. Um, impartiality is, as you, as you know, Kay, um, a, a central requirement for all news programming um, uh, on TV and radio. And the BBC, I think, because of its audience being so broad and because it is our national broadcaster, the responsibility on them is even higher than it is for anyone else. And, look, a lot of the time, most of the time, they provide a, a really fantastic service for us, I think, along with others such as Sky. Um, but, you know, they don't always get it right. And when they do, I think they need to, you know, be honest about that and give a very quick apology and clarification. They're getting better at that, but they need to do more. But I also think we do need to recognise that impartiality does depend a little bit where you sit. So, you know, some people will think something's impartial and other people will think another thing, it, 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 you know, think it isn't. So you've always got to allow a little bit for that. Um, you know, you, you, we want... We want programming that everybody is interested in and people are going to have different reactions to it sometimes. Um, but there's a bit, big difference between mistakes uh, that they should correct and bias, though, isn't there? Yeah, there is. I mean, accuracy is really important and actually the BBC scores very highly on that with the public. Uh, impartiality, they score slightly lower. And I think uh, they need to keep working at this. They've got a programme uh, of change that they are introducing. They have excellent journalists um, and some really fantastic uh, programmes that they bring to the public. But they can never let up on this. It's too important. And their role as the national broadcaster means that they have to have it top of mind. A final thought. How difficult is it to um, look at, I don't know, the BBC, GB News, other broadcasters that might be somewhere in the middle and then decide who is doing as they should and who needs to be reprimanded? Mm -hmm. Well, look, a lot of this is about the audience. So we always take into account who's watching, what they're expecting. Uh, what we don't want is some form of uniform broadcasting in this country. There is definitely a role for, you know, organisations like GB News or others that are maybe coming from a particular perspective, provided that for each individual programme they meet our impartiality rules and that they have a sufficient range of views brought to bear on matters of important public policy. So that's what we ask, uh, but they have a lot of flexibility within that. Uh, and I think, you know, that's really important because the last thing we want to do is close down debate, close down opinions and, and have some kind of rather sterile and boring uh, media landscape. We're very far from that. OK, it's good to see you. Fascinating stuff. Thank Thanks you. very much indeed.